A few episodes back in episode 22, we talked about the movement to shut down STEM, which had uh, not just that hashtag, uh, hashtag shut down STEM, um, but shut down academia and a number of others as well. Uh, and spoke to how a focus on shutting down science and its associated ways of thinking is doomed, is certain to doom our civilization. So just another follow on to that before I move into some of the other domains where we're seeing this. Uh, Oxford, uh, this is slightly old news at this point, it's a couple weeks old. Oxford is decolonizing degrees in math and science. Do you hear this? <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's right. Oxford, and, and this is not the first time they've gone down this absurd road. Uh, let me pull it up. Uh, okay, yeah, you can show our screen now, Zach. Um, as, as reported in the Times, uh, the London paper, Oxford University has revealed plans to decolonize, in quotes, its maths and science degrees and will allow students of any subject who have been affected by the Black Lives Matter furor to seek lenient marking. Now, if that's not a gameable position, I don't know what is. And, you know, maybe to their credit, they don't say um, only for, for BIPOC or people of color, uh, students of color. They say for anyone who's been affected, uh, we will offer you um, we will offer you the option to seek lenient marking. So I should point out it's a gameable position, but it is also to the extent that it just simply happens, we are... Um, hobbling our position relative to others automatically. Mm -hmm. So if we take something like mathematics and we elevate people whose marks are lower because they've been busy with something else, then what we are doing is we are hobbling our position in math. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't frankly know where math people end up in terms of building civilization and innovating new things. They do, but it's just it's uh, it's a little harder to detect where they are because, you know, you can't apply math directly. It doesn't make things. But let's say you do this with your engineering school. Right? And we've actually we've seen that I didn't pull it up, but we we received an email this week as well from uh someone who's getting their PhD in engineering, who is seeing a dissertation being defended uh, on basically the need for social justice in engineering. For that work, they will receive a PhD in engineering. For work advocating for social justice ad, uh, activism in engineering, they will receive the highest degree awarded in engineering. So that's capture right we there. We do know what role engineering plays in right. civilization. And so the mm -hmm. point would be, were you to have a diversity of positions on this, the engineering schools that did not engage in this would outcompete those that did engage in it. Mm -hmm. The students from those schools would be higher quality. They would go on to populate the world. So the fact that we are going to see increasingly that this takes over the entirety of the academy, there are no holdouts because there can't be because power is being used to make sure there are not, that is going to put the United States and any other country that can't resist this madness at a disadvantage. We will then be hobbled relative to our enemies that don't play this game abroad. And so the question so the, is... the we here is some you know weird amalgam uh, of just those who fall prey to the bullying and the ideology. Well, I guess what I would say, the difficult lesson is that even those who believe that they are um, advocating for their interests in advancing this, those interests are very short term. Even if you come out on top, you're on top on a ship that you're setting up to sink. And so it, this is not in anyone's interest. And uh, that that's going to be a hard message. Many people won't be able to hear it. But it is necessary that we shut down this ideology in order that we ourselves don't sink something mm -hmm. that would harm us all, everyone, the protesters, everyone. Yeah. So this is necessary that we do this above the objection of anybody uh, who would stand in our way, which okay. does not mean that we don't subscribe to the idea that black lives are undervalued, that that's gone on too long, and that it's time for it to stop. At that level, mm -hmm. yes, of course, but um, at the level of should we destroy the republic in order to make a statement about black lives that is ambiguous uh, or worse? No, of course we shouldn't. Everyone um, is depending on us not doing that. Right. And just to, to go full circle here on the Oxford, this I don't even know where this term decolonizing began. I'm sure it's somewhere over in critical race theory, you know, theory space. Um, but the idea of decolonizing maths and sciences by allowing lenient grading for anyone who claims to have been affected by their own activism, effectively, um, 
is this is not the first time we've seen this. Um, there are a lot of schools uh, where we've where we've seen a push for this, and we first saw it indeed at Evergreen, where um, the administration, in fact, um, caved to almost all the demands that came their way and uh, accepted uh, that students should be um, should be. At Evergreen, there weren't grades, but assessed more leniently and, you know, basically not have credits taken away uh, if the reason that they had not fulfilled their academic duties was because they were too busy rioting, actually, right? So uh, this is this is becoming yet another thing that's standard in the playbook. 